Hello, and welcome to HIV.gov's continuing coverage of CROI 2023 here in Seattle. We're here with an update on the latest on HIV vaccine research. I'm Steve Holman, and joining us here is Dr. Carl Diefenbach. Carl is the director of NIH's Division of AIDS at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Carl, welcome back. It's good to see you again today, Steve, for the second time. Nice to have you back. So Carl, late today, there was a special session on the status of HIV vaccine research, and it was a full house. It was literally standing room only in there. Hundreds of researchers gathered to hear the latest information. They talked about two main things. Let's start with a quick update, a review of the most recent results from the Mosaico trial, which your office was involved in funding. Sure. The Mosaico trial was the last of a type of vaccine testing a very specific concept in vaccinology. This was a full phase three because we thought this had the highest probability of success. As everybody's aware, as was published in the newspapers, this trial was stopped by the DSMB for lack of activity. Um, uh, Susan Buckbinder reviewed the data and showed how um, the trial was performed, how safe it was, but at the end of the day, there was no biological signal of the, of, that would have represented any oh, level yes. of protection uh, for this vaccine concept. So. What the, part of the theme of this afternoon was when a door closes, there are other doors that are open through which we can pass to advance an HIV vaccine. Well, so that probably begins to answer a question that I had, and I imagine many of our viewers had. Does that mean it's back to the drawing board for HIV vaccine research? Well, in a sense, for the, the strategy that was Mosaico and in Bakoto before that and 702 before that, it is the end of the strategy. And those are not going back to the drawing board because it's a failed concept. So what we do have are other concepts that are in study now and are in development that are focused on developing ways of triggering something called broad neutralizing antibodies. Um, and as such, uh, we can do that um, and demonstrate because face it, the COVID vaccine works by making neutralizing antibodies. We need to be able to trigger these kinds of antibodies from an HIV specific immunogen. And that's where the work is focused now on building those vaccine tools, the, the, the building blocks for those vaccines, testing them, and then assembling them into a coherent vaccine. And one of the things that Dr. Corey was just speaking about in that session is that for HIV, that's particularly challenging. So one of my favorite things, the line he borrowed tonight, which I appreciate of, is so far it's HIV, 78 million humans, zero because we've never had anybody living with HIV spontaneously clear this infection. So anything we do in vaccinology has to be so much better than what the human body can do by itself. And that's why we have to go to this approach of a piece of the virus, make a specific response against it and assemble these pieces, almost like Legos, into a setup okay. that makes a, a complete structure. So think about the building blocks that are Legos, put them together in a unique, unique way and you get a full vaccine. So it sounds like there are a number of different uh, vaccine studies in, in early, mid stages, and some different platforms. I would working. say a fair way to put it is everything is very early stage. In okay. fact, this type of study has a specific name. They're called experimental medicine trials uh -huh. because you're testing not something that will ultimately become a product, but you're testing to see if this thing that you've designed does what you expect it to. So in many ways, it's not a test of concept, but a test of principle. If I make A, does it make the right immune response against A? And then can I take A and assemble it with B, C, and D to get a vaccine that makes A, B, C, and D? Okay, terrific. So some challenges ahead, but also opportunities ahead, it sounds well, like. Well, the, the, the challenge, there will always be, it's the other thing Dr. Corey said tonight that I think was very prescient of him, is we have seen the, cur we don't know where all the curveballs are that HIV is going to, to throw at us. There are probably others out there. We, will, we, we don't know what we don't know. We need to be humble about this and mm -hmm. take this one logical step at a time, prove the step, move to the next hypothesis, prove it and build a firm structure that will ultimately become our immunogen for inducing broad neutralizing antibodies in the vast majority of people that receive this vaccine. Terrific. Thanks for that explanation. In terms of what this means for our viewers in the near term, 
there's not going to be a vaccine available in, in the near term. Not in the near term, but I, I think there's if there's still interest in participating in vaccine trials, mm -hmm. there is an ability to um, participate in these experimental medicine trials. In some ways, they're easier to participate in. It's a, a, a set of two or three shots. You, uh, your samples are analyzed. You're thanked for your participation. Uh, and you may be invited back for the next stage. That's a terrific and so point. so it is, this is still, there's still a, a room for activism. There's still a room for people to participate actively in vaccine trials. And it's really important that we continue to support community to do so. That's terrific. For folks who are interested in participating, is there, should they go to the clinicaltrials.gov website? I think or? the best thing is to, is to through the HVTN website, to look at where the trials are in the trial participants' sites, to participating sites so that you can get in and get screened. That's great. So that's the HIV Vaccine Trials Network website. We'll add that in the comments below uh, this video. Carl, thank you as always for your expertise. You've been very generous with us here today um, and all through CROI. Um, always good to get mm -hmm. your take on it, help mm -hmm. us bring some of the latest HIV research news to our followers, um, viewers uh, who are interested. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow. We'll have some additional interviews with HRSA's Dr. Laura Cheever, who administers the Ryan White HIV AIDS program. And we'll also be talking to CDC HIV leaders, Dr. Jonathan Merman and Dr. John Brooks. Um, so stay tuned tomorrow for that. Uh, continue to follow HIV.gov on the blog and social media for additional updates. That's it for tonight here at Croy.